Hey you, welcome to the Christian Life Coaching Podcast for Weight Loss. I'm so excited that you are here. Like, do you ever just find yourself, do you ever find yourself just feeling like you're stuck? Like you're in a season where you just can't get out of your own way. Here are seven things to help you to just discern if in your life right now in this season where you can't change despite wanting to and trying to and starting and failing, right? Like all of those things. Here are seven, have seven ways to discern if you are stuck or not. The first one is you feel just constantly overwhelmed. You are exhausted. You feel um, directionless. You feel hopeless. You've lost your motivation. You feel like you don't have a purpose, like no sense of achievement. Um, you feel worthless, like you've lost motivation or you're just perpetually surrounded by conflict. The last way is you feel alone or isolated or like isolating. These are some of the things that I look for in my clients when they come to work with me who are <clears throat> who are just stuck, right? Yeah, obviously as a as a Christian life coach, I help women in an area where I have been qualified and that is in the area of weight loss, right? Because that's where God qualified me, helped me to get unstuck and now I help women through the seekers method get unstuck. But I'm also a certified Christian life coach. And so I help women outside of weight loss too. You might not have known that. And I have all new, completely affordable ways for you to start working with me. If you find yourself feeling stuck in this season of life, like you want to change, but you don't know what to do to change. And like, you're just in a season where you're just super frustrated because you're not showing up and you're not living the life that you thought you would live, right? If that's you, I encourage you to just pay attention to what I'm sharing with you today. Because I I so remember being that way. I knew that God had something so big for me to do in this life, but I couldn't quite get out of my own way in order to actually live that life. You might like, do you feel that way? Like, do you feel that? I want to help you to get unstuck. You see, when you do what you know you should do, <clears throat> overdoing what you want, that usually only happens as a result. Well, number one, if you're working with me, but it usually only happens as a result of you realizing that, that you don't have to want to do hard things. Like I was perpetually trusting in my senses, right? If I didn't want to do it, if I felt drained or I was too tired, I allowed my body, my sense of whatever I was feeling in that particular moment to be the thing that would motivate me to do something or not to do it. You don't have to want to do hard things. You've got to just recognize what's more important, how I feel and what I want to do in this moment or what I ultimately want. Another thing is realizing that you don't have to like doing hard things. I mean, just this morning, I didn't want to do my morning workout. I teach all of my clients in my in the weight loss portion of my practice. I teach them <clears throat> to do a four minute burn and brew. It's a high intensity workout. I teach them how to do that in a fasted state. And I encourage them to do it first thing in the morning, right? It's like the eat the frog theory. You just, the thing you don't want to do it, you do it first thing in the morning. Just this morning, I didn't want to do that hard thing. And I did it anyhow. You don't have to like it. That's part of the problem is most people commit to liking it and therefore they can't commit to doing it. So break up with your desire to think that you have to like doing it. You don't have to like doing it right? I don't like doing laundry, but laundry has to be done. I don't like, you know, doing a lot of the things I have to, I don't like pulling the weeds, but I have to do it. Okay. Another thing is you have to realize that you have to break up with feeling like doing hard things. I never feel like doing it and I never like doing it. You don't have to ever feel like doing it. You don't ever feel like doing it. You don't ever have to want to do it. You just 
need to do it. Because when you do what you need to do, it's ultimately going to give you what you ultimately want. Another thing I like to teach my clients is when you find yourself not doing the thing that you know you need to do because of the outcome you want to have, either you want to lose weight or you want to stop over drinking or you want to quit smoking or you want to quit being lazy in the evenings or you want to quit gossiping, using bad words, watching wrong shows, drinking too much coffee, <laughs> um, go to God, right? Like there isn't any area of your life where he won't help you. So what I encourage women to do is when you are at that point of resistance, where you know you're not going to, you're going to desire to conform to your old patterns. When you're at that point of resistance, you get alone and you pray in the spirit and you talk to God and you pray with specificity for what you need. And after you pray, you simply obey. You do what it is that you need to do. You do what it is that you might feel resistance to doing. And for a lot of my clients, it's after you pray for what you need that you actually experience the enablement and the empowerment to do what you should do. I teach all of my clients about the profound power of building your faith and walking in the direction of your faith, right? Because faith is action. So the scripture I teach them is Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. Go read it and memorize it. And when you pray this prayer, this is what I love about it. it this is how you pray for the strength and power to do what it is that you know is right over what just simply feels right. And when you pray this, there's an exchange that happens. If you want God's power and his strength to help you where you feel feel weak and powerless, it comes as a result of you trusting. And that's your walk of faith. And so for me, when I was unstuck and I was living in mediocrity and I was the Sherry Capilla that I don't even remember now, for me, I stopped. I I was, I was free from being stuck. I stopped staying stuck in my life when I gave up what it was that I kept running to that was only giving me what I wanted and not what I needed. I, I got unstuck when I stopped running to all of those things, right? Things that were keeping me stuck. And I knew what they were right? I knew it was staying up late and believing that I had to, that was my only me time in the evenings or, you know, believing that I couldn't lose weight because I wasn't willing to give up alcohol, all of those things. I knew the things that were keeping me stuck in my life, but here's the thing. I didn't hate the things that were keeping me stuck. You're not always going to hate them, right? Because they're the things that don't feel bad or wrong. It's just the fact that you keep running to them and you allow them in your life with such a high degree of frequency. <clears throat> and, and, you know, like for me, I, I want to think about some of these because some of these things you might just need to be awakened to, right? These are things like staying up too late or um, even staying up too late and endlessly scrolling social media, watching TV, through all hours of the night when you know you've got to get up in the morning, right? Watching too much television or watching the wrong things on television, not spending time in the word, not getting enough sleep every night or eating all, like this one was big for me, um, eating all of the wrong foods that limited my ability, like my thinking ability, my, my discernment, my clarity, because they weighed me down physically and emotionally even, right? And eating these foods that made me feel a certain way about how I therefore couldn't lose weight. And I started to believe that, you know, I was just all the wrong things. I believed I couldn't lose weight. And then I started to feel a certain way about my body. And then I would get stuck and I would, wouldn't feel confident. And I would be self-conscious. And I would have all of these thoughts that I would project onto other people about what they're thinking about me that I had no, no, no way of knowing, right? You see, I didn't hate the things that kept me stuck. And what kept me stuck, and very well could be the things that are keeping you stuck as well, what kept me stuck were things like, 
wrong thoughts, wrong thoughts, wrong thoughts, such as the thought of, you know, um, changing what I do after work is simply too hard. I'm too old. I'm kind of just stuck to my ways or I'm never going to change. Or, you know, um, I might as well stop believing that I can change because I keep proving that I can't. I can only start diets, but I can never fail them. Or I'm too tired to do X, Y, Z when I come home from work, or I'm too tired in the mornings to get out of my bed and actually spend time in the word. Or, you know, when I come home from work, it, you know, it, I'm just going to watch TV and eat popcorn because my day was too hard. Right. I mean, these are things that I really did. And these are things that really kept me stuck. Or I would have a thought like today was just too hard. Today was a bad day. It was so stressful. I just need alcohol to make it better. Or I would believe things like I have to stay up late because that's my only me time when the kids go to bed. And this is what this is when I would stay up binging all the shows that I already know that I already knew that as a believer, I shouldn't be watching. And when I would stay up late, it's just coincidental, isn't it? How I would have no desire then to wake up in the morning and spend time in the word. Like I couldn't even see how the enemy was using me as a weapon formed against myself. I had to make changes in order to get unstuck in my life. I had to stop believing that I had to like making changes. I simply could not, I could not change and also stay the same simultaneously, nor can you. And for me, I knew that if I wanted to be transformed, I had to make sacrifices. And the sacrifices that I made, those sacrifices made way for me to step into a new, into a renewed way of thinking, like well into my 40s, right? And I developed a new mindset, a new mindset that helped me to do things so I could change. But none of this was available to me until I appropriated my faith through having a relationship with God where I prioritized and valued a relationship above the things that I had prioritized and valued a relationship with in the world. And so this new mindset was hard to create, hard to make space for. But I had a renewed mindset and a renewed mindset is the thing that actually enabled me to be free, to walk in the fullness of my faith, to yield to the Holy Spirit. So I want you to get this. You're, you're going to need to make physical sacrifices and your physical sacrifices, get this, your physical sacrifices are an outward sign of your inward faith. And this is what changed me. And if I can do this in my Christian life and I can get unstuck and stop living in mediocrity and I can begin living free in the fullness of who God created me to be, this is also available to you. You can live in the fullness of your faith and you can change your Christian life from the inside out. Because if God can do this in me, through me, and for me, he can do it for you too. It's on the other side of you recognizing that in order to be transformed, you're going to have to make sacrifices. You're going to have to partner with him in a relationship to renew your mind. And you're going to have to understand that it's going to be hard and that you don't have to, to like every single thing because God is interested in changing and developing your character and not God isn't interested in your comfort. He wants to show you your capacity in this Christian life, but it's all about you having a willingness to do what is right instead of what just feels right. I hope this helps you and helps you to understand how to get unstuck even in weight loss.